Welcome back. Welcome back, family. We missed you. I know you missed us. We back in here again. Got a good show for you today. We got some things lined up for you uh, starting this year out. Uh, got some good topics going on. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button so you can stay in tune with us when we drop a new video and you don't miss out. Uh, with that being said, EJ. What's up? What's up? Um, first things first, welcome back, Cam. Good to have you back this week. Um, we got a whole bunch of stuff we're going to get into today, but I'm going to let Jay take the lead on this one, starting off uh, for this one. Uh, Jay, you had some important news uh, regarding Mara's favorite game, uh, Cyberpunk. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, enlighten us about what this new patch is about, man. Yeah. So uh, we, like EJ said, we got some new Cyberpunk news um, regarding a new update. We, uh, we recently got a new update by the Cyberpunk devs where uh, some, you know, of course, some glitches and some fixes are in there. Boo! <laughs> uh, this is one of the things I'm looking forward in the uh, in the update because I haven't played it yet, but I will be playing it soon, maybe later tonight, tomorrow or something. Uh, they finally, and EJ can vouch for this, they finally uh, added a sensitivity slider with the driving. And uh, the driving is horrible. If you haven't played the game or you have played the game, you would know that the driving the mechanics. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, but the driver, the driving mechanics were ridiculous. If you're going to make an open world, uh, a driving game, take some tips from GTA, if anything. But uh, driving was one of the main issues with the game, especially for me as I was going around uh, completing missions just to acquire certain vehicles. And I couldn't drive a lot of them in the way I wanted to or just, you know, because they weren't really working. Uh, if, you know, I'm hitting people, killing people. I can't make a simple turn without the car. Like, just, it's ridiculous, you know? So that's one of the fixes I'm looking forward to. Um, so they, we will have some, we'll have a link in the description to where you can look at all the updates yourself. But for the most part, uh, those are the fixes that we are looking at uh I, what else in connected to cyberpunk as well we have um it's gonna be hard to, i'm gonna butcher this guy's name it looks like it's european or russian uh, his name is andres zawatsky and he uh was one of the or he is the he was the lead gameplay designer for cyberpunk 2077 so if you had any issues he was the one uh that was really getting hit up in the twitter mentions for uh, gameplay issues as he was the lead designer. He had been with the company for a long time. He has been with the company for eight years. And he announced uh, he announced today, March 22nd, at the date we're recording this, um, that he will be leaving CDPR and uh, you know looking for greener pastures. So he, uh, he started with the company as a QA tester. Um, he would work. He worked on The Witcher 3 and uh, its DLC. And uh, we don't know if he's leaving specifically because of all the controversy dealing with the game or uh, uh, any other any other things. But he is leaving. I, um, it's kind of reminiscent of what um, we talked about last time, EJ, on our podcast, where uh, one of the lead um, game with well, a gameplay director for Anthem. Uh, had left the project for Anthem Next and started working on a new, the new Elder Scrolls, uh, not the new Elder Scrolls, the new uh, Dragon Age game. So, gotcha. and that game got canceled. So he's leaving and we got an update for Cyberpunk. So look forward to that um, if you're still playing Cyberpunk. Cool, cool. Um, let's shift gears a minute. And uh, this is a topic I wanted to touch on with Cam since he's back now, we can kind of get into it. Um, the Nets have been making some big moves recently. Um, they signed this dude, Nick Claxton, that's been playing a lot of big minutes lately. And as we all know, the big signing or somewhat, you know, lukewarm signing was Blake Griffin. Um, <laughs> Cam, what's your thoughts on that, bro? Uh, hey, when I tell y'all about Blake, though, I told you, I told y'all. Who was that telling me he only, he had a broke leg? Hold on. There wasn't nobody in here, was it? No. I don't think it no, was in here. No. My bad, man. I, I've been having so much conversation the past couple of weeks, man. I've been awake. But, okay. So, I yes, Blake Griffin is going to be a great addition. He's not going to have to do much. 
it looks like he's more than willing to that to buy into his role so that's great uh this other dude um i haven't really seen him play lately i haven't watched him but stats look good man yeah. i don't i don't see the nets being beat that's i mean because kd is plug and play so yep man it, look and and with with Bron and with Bron, we'll get on that. But you know, with the Lakers having their their injury problems, man, they they need to have a perfect year in order for them to be in. True, really. I mean, I'm 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 the same way with it. Um, me and David, we kind of touched on it a bit uh, last week, but you pretty much hit the nail on the head when, like you like you said, Blake doesn't really have to do much. All he has to do really is just show up and play his role. And, you know, they were making fun of him because he hadn't dunked since December of 2019. Hmm. First game with the Nets had his first dunk. So I think he was just doing whatever it, it took just to get out of Detroit and finally with a team where he actually has a chance to win a championship. So yeah. um, I mean, he can step back and hit the three. He can, he can play defense when he needs to. He can, he's another big man. I mean, he's what, like 6'9"? He's, he's another guy that can put, they can put a body on Anthony Davis or somebody like that, uh, you know, if Anthony Davis is available, we'll touch on that later also. But um, yeah, he's just another man that they can plug in the rotation. And when KD comes back, um, like you said, it, it's if they lose, it's on them. That's all when, I can say. When KD, look, one thing about when KD come back, and so Blake obviously would not have signed there if he didn't understand what his role was going to be. So. I, I firmly believe he is going to become a solid defender. Like, I, I can't, I, I just don't think that he's going to go to that team thinking or understanding that he's going to have any type of offensive in, input outside of a dunk. Or, like, that's just not what they need or he can't, there's not even really, really much space to add that. So I, I really think he's going to buy in on defense, man, which is going to make them extremely dangerous. Like, I, I'm telling you, man, I, I think they're doing the way that Bron be setting up his teams and getting people to buy into their roles. Somehow they're doing this with the Nets now. I mean, but it's, it's because you know they got the, the stars there, and people are tired of going and playing. I mean, in my opinion, you know, Jay's not going to hear this, but they tired of going and trying to go team up with LeBron. So they're trying to team up with somebody else now. So um, LeBron's on top, and there's another team that has a chance to, to take the throne. So. People are going there because they know, I mean, once James Harden went there, I knew it was a wrap. So players in the league can only be salivating, you know, ready to get to get on this because it's it's time, you know, anybody who's been any good recently and that needs a championship, the place to go if you get bought out is Brooklyn. So, yep. But all the injuries that are in LA and stuff like that, like we'll get on later, why would you go to that team and not have your two superstars and try to go to that team when you can go to Brooklyn who is at least going to have two out of three. So, Which is still good enough. What? <laughs> right. I mean, you, everybody can see what James Harden is doing. He's walking 25, 10, and 10 a night. Like, that's that's ridiculous. So, they're not mentioning him for MVP as far as, like, it's Which between is, LeBron and Embiid. But, is, no, they're both Harden. hurt. They're, they're both disqualified from here. Like, they're both hurt. Right. Like, no. Right. I hate that shit. I mean, <laughs> I feel you. He, he should be the number one vote winner. He should be number one in the league right now because what he's doing is ridiculous. I mean, at, at, at any given night, he can drop 35, 19, and 10. Like he was, his stat line the other day, I think he had 34 points, 18, 18 assists, and, and 12 rebounds. Like, where else are you seeing that in the league? So, yeah. you got to give it to him. He's he's doing he's doing amazing over there. He's he's definitely th thriving. Um, uh, what about Embiid? Is uh, I haven't heard anything from him as of late. I, and uh, how's Embiid doing? It? Is, is James Harden overtaking Embiid in the MVP? Because I know you were vouching if, for him a lot, EJ. No, nah, I, I still am. If if Embiid can come back within the next week or two and finish the season at the rate he was before, I think it should go to Embiid because. Know, we haven't seen a big man do this in a while. I mean, he's stepping back. He's doing a James Harden step back on people in the game. And he can also play inside and he rebounds and he blocks shots. Like he does everything as well as shooting outside, shooting from mid range. I mean, he shoots better than Ben Simmons and Ben Simmons is basically playing the guard for them. So, I mean, he was just having a better year. I, 
There's exactly. no question, bro. He was having a better year. Like, if he comes back and plays that same way, he sh- there's no way he shouldn't get it. Yeah, because, I mean, th- this is the best numbers of his career, and there's no saying if he's going to put these numbers up again. Like, you can't cheat him out, out, of, out of the MVP if he comes back doing the same thing he was before. He's been out for, what, like two and a half weeks now? So, um, we'll see. I mean, if he comes back and plays the same, he's MVP, James Harden second. I'll give LeBron third. Um, that would be my record. I didn't really see. I didn't really have hype hopes for LeBron getting MVP anyway. Cause it just seems like no matter what, he's he's not going to get it. So, so <laughs> it's like no matter no matter what he does, it's like they just disqualified him. They just blacklisted him from the MVP. So I wouldn't say they blacklisted him. I mean, we just we know what it was, and you know what it is. I mean, they go as far as AD go. So I mean, it, it is what it is. So I mean, it, it's nothing against LeBron. You playing. He, he's playing for his age and what he's doing. LeBron James is playing a hell, a hell of a season. I give it to him. Like, he really is. But we all know at the end of the day, I said it. I told you this the, last year before the season started last year. If Anthony Davis gets hurt, that's a wrap. And that, that, that's what it is. So. Well, we'll see. We'll see. He'll be back soon. He'll be back soon. Speaking of uh, Lakers injuries, this is roll right into the next subject. Um, LeBron. Hold on, twisted his ankle, got hurt. Uh, what a couple days ago? Um, to my, in my opinion, it looked like he had yeah. a performance. In my <laughs> opinion, um, because I, I mean, I, I didn't see a whole lot, but it, he made it look like he had it got injured and he won't be coming back to see. That's what he made it look like. Um, yeah, I call Jay, that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, this is your boy, so I'm gonna let you take take the lead, and you explain to us what happened and how long he's gonna be out, and if it's gonna affect the Lakers' chances of getting a let high seed. Let, let me meet myself so I can like. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, I've, at first off, I watched. I had to watch some highlights because I actually didn't watch the game. I was at work, but um. From what I seen, there was a um, Solomon Hill, who's also an OG Pelican, by the way. Um, but uh, Solomon Hill and LeBron were going after uh, a, 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 a wild ball, and Solomon Hill fell, and it looked like it it looked like he kind of grabbed LeBron's leg a little bit or his foot oh when he was chasing for the ball. And this, look, this is not just me. I mean, that's what it looked like, but I think I played it a couple of times and it didn't look it didn't look that bad and it didn't look like he was trying to do an intentional. It just looked, it, it just seemed that's the way his hands kind of landed. But a, but a lot of people on Twitter were coming out trying to say that um, even the Lakers, some of the Lakers players were coming out accusing Solomon Hill of you know uh, purposely trying to injure LeBron. Um, I I can't say I can't say that I'm not I'm not on that train. Um, like I said, it doesn't. It didn't really look like it was intentional. It did look like his feet, his hands did kind of touch LeBron's foot or whatever. And sh- you know, stuff like that happens in a game. It's not like he, I'm not gonna sit and say that was that was intentional. But uh, that happened, and he fell, and it looked like he twisted his ankle. But he got up, he he came back, and and I think he made a shot, and then decided to take himself out the game. Uh, they're saying indefinitely. Uh, we found out just recently that um, his his uh, X-rays came back, and it was a negative. So that's good news uh, for us LeBron fans like myself. Uh, he So the thing is now is when will he be back? So they're saying a couple of weeks, maybe a month. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we chatted about this in Texas that, you know, the, the, the Lakers are going to have to play some some great ball coming up without with AD and LeBron so they can keep their, play, their uh, playoff position. But uh, I'm really kind of placing my bets in Anthony Davis to come back. So... Um, from the reports that I've been reading and stuff like that, he was supposed to come back um, some time ago, um, some time ago. But they pushed his uh, they pushed his timetable back, and we may not. Uh, the rumor is we're going to see him at the end of March, early April. Um, don't know how true it is. It's the rumor, but uh, if he comes back in a good amount of time, I think um, he can come back and try to uh, wheel the Lakers to a, a, a decent playoff uh, position, and it'll be like LeBron never left. You know, it won't. It won't be a huge. It won't be a huge hit to the team if we get if we get one of them back. <laughs> AD can hold it. AD can hold the fort down till LeBron comes back. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm placing my bets on. So we'll see how that plays out. 
Man, look, this whole that was disgusting when I saw that some of the Lakers said that he did that on purpose. Like, man, I, you watch the play. He is clearly trying to stop his momentum. As a matter of fact, he did. He stopped his own momentum, not LeBron's leg. Watch it closely. Also, LeBron try he goes and flops on the floor and rolls around screaming and hollering like like a two-year-old and then gets up and runs and like dude like bro I, I hate when he does that all right but i already know the ploy is this the fix is in oh something happened lebron was hurt that's that like it's gonna have to be some kind of reason as to why he didn't win like it can't ever just be LeBron didn't win. Like it always has to be some kind of excuse. It's already this ain't this ain't the first time it's happened. It's not already happened before. So you know, <laughs> it is what it is, man. That man, that's crazy. Ain't no way that he tried to hurt that dude. He knocked the ball away and tried to go for it and pulled up. Yeah. Right, and I think this no, is a, about it, I think this is a you know. For the true NBA fans, this is where you got to look at the players' history. And Solomon Hill is not, you know, if you follow, if you ever followed him to a certain extent, it's not like he's the greatest player and everything. But it, like I said, he was he's been with the Pelicans for a while. That's why I'm, I'm I know Solomon Hill for the most part. He is not that type of guy to do dirty plays. So I don't know why all of a sudden, you know, he's being looked at as the bad guy. So I don't agree with the Lakers trying to accuse him uh, of doing anything. I think. For the most part, Solomon Hill is respected around the league. For the most part, uh, so he, you got like I said, in these type of cases, you got to look at the history. He's not, he's not the, the Morris twins. If the Morris twins, one of the Morris twins did something like that, they did it on purpose. I don't give, I don't care what happened. They did it on purpose. So, so uh, I don't, I wouldn't put that on Hill. It's a messed up injury. Um, if Draymond did it, you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So I'm not, we can't be quick to point fingers. And, you know, of course, you know, there's, look, there's certain LeBron fans that just, you know, everything that happens to him is, is somebody else's fault. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm like that. You know, you know, he got an ankle injury, he got an ankle injury. It's not Solomon Hill's fault. So that's what it is. Just hope that he has a speedy recovery. Hope he comes back to defend the title because um, uh, I do want to see a Clippers. You know, Stephen A was talking about, you know, we got to see a Kawhi versus LeBron matchup because we didn't get to see it. I just it. don't see that anymore, bro. Like, I just, I don't, I don't see, I don't see Kawhi being that. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is Kawhi versus LeBron. It. I don't see it anymore. Yeah, he lost it last year. When he had the opportunity to even meet him in the, in the Western Conference Finals and then they got beat by, what was it, Denver? Yeah. Yeah. So... I just, I think he lost a lot of, he lost a lot of, a lot of it, bro. He lost a lot of his juice last year getting beat. So, um, that and, and it, honestly, I don't even think they could beat them if if the Lakers are at full strength. <laughs> unless they can make a trade, the Clippers can make a trade and get another point guard. I don't think they can beat them. Well, speaking of that, the rumor, uh, well, it's not a rumor. It's, they made it known that the Clippers are trying to go after Lonzo. So I don't know how much Lonzo is going to change for them. <laughs> To be honest. I mean, the only thing I can say for Lonzo maybe is that it'll give him a true point guard who can actually set up, set like set the floor and run and run plays. Like Patrick Beverly is not a he's just a pest. He's just a defensive player, honestly. Like Patrick Beverly should never be your starting point guard. That's why they have uh Kawhi and PG uh you know basically handling the ball most of the time. So if you can get a true point guard to come in and, and run the floor. I think Lonzo can do that. He can run the floor and he can pass the ball. He ain't gonna. I mean, he and he's starting to shoot better than he was in the past. So you get him, you get, you get him in the system, and you get him to actually move the ball around. He can help out a lot. He's he's an improvement over Patrick Beverly in my eyes. Mm. Well, it's Patrick Beverly and uh, the other guy. I can't think of his name. His name escapes me. Um, Lou Williams. Not Lou. The other uh, guy from they, that he that he got from Detroit. Um, What's his name? The white boy? No, black guy, black guy. Man, what's his name? What's his name? He was on he was on OKC with James Harden and KD back in the day. Oh, um uh yeah, Reggie Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They, I know they yeah, have him. Reggie Jackson trash. He, he yeah, is. Yeah. He is trash. Well, I'm, 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 I'm and I'm glad the Lakers didn't pick him up because I remember when he was available and everybody was trying to get him. The Lakers were trying to get him. I'm like, why are y'all trying to get Reggie Jackson? <laughs> Reggie Jackson played good for a total of 20 games. And after that 20 <laughs> games, he got traded and went somewhere and was trash after that. So, uh, like you said, it was all off of that little performance he had for a little bit. I think it was when uh, he was in OKC, right? Is yeah. that where he was? He or, was in OKC yeah. and then Detroit. I think he, he played well when Russ was out or did something. You see, when he went to Detroit, they ain't do nothing. So, I mean, it ain't like he went over there and changed the team. So, right, we'll see. But yeah, if they can get Lonzo, man, he might help him out. He, uh, he can run the floor for him and, and make sure people get in their position and stuff like that. And make it easier for Paul George and them to move off the ball. So, that's a possibility. Right. Some important news from Xbox this week. I know people are still trying to get um, some of these systems uh, from the last year. Basically, um, if y'all don't know, Xbox has a program where you can basically um, get Xbox Live and Xbox Live. I mean, Xbox, the Xbox and Xbox Live Gold uh, for I think it's like $34 a month. Um, it was like one of the programs that Xbox Microsoft had. Uh, it's going to reopen again this Thursday, I think at three o'clock p.m. So for people who are trying to get a part, be a part of that program, I think it's $34 a month for, I don't know, I think it's like, 16, 18 months, something like that. Um, and basically you get Xbox, the Xbox, and you get Xbox Live Gold. So um, be on the lookout for that. Marvin, I know you was trying to look at that uh, last year. So that's some important news. People who are still trying to get these systems out here. And Jay, you said uh, something about Xbox Live is, is being called the Xbox Network now. Yes, yes. It is no longer <laughs> Xbox Live. It is now called xbox network <laughs> so microsoft put out a press release and they basically said that um um they wanted to update their uh the label now because they wanted to distinguish it um they wanted uh, they wanted to distinguish xbox live from xbox live gold membership so apparently i guess from their point of view there was a lot of confusion with Xbox Live and Xbox Live Gold memberships, I guess. I mean, maybe that's for the new people coming in. I, I never got that confused, but I, could, I guess that's the issue. So they decided to switch it up. So I guess so people are less confused. So it is now, uh, rest in peace, Xbox Live. It's now Xbox Network. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like PlayStation Network, basically. Like it's just, I mean, they can come with something different than Xbox right. Network. But... Isn't Nintendo Network the same? Isn't it called Nintendo Network too for Nintendo? Or was it called? Uh, it's called. Uh, I'm forgetting. It. I just I just had to get it too, so I'm, I don't know why I forget. But it might be Jay, and that's really really lazy on on their part if it is. Like everybody can't have just the network. It's called something different. Oh, yeah, I just looked it up. It's it is Nintendo Network. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man>. original? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to tell you. All right, it's trash. Gonna call it the network not to offer us anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, and no, yeah. I mean, they only offering us old games right now, but you know, the, but as we talked about last week, the Bethesda deal and all the games. You see that Jay? All those games actually went to X, uh, went to Xbox, uh, the uh, Xbox, whatever you call it now. It game Pass, the name. Game Pass Network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, there's been. There's a bunch of new games in, in the Game Pass now, but that's the and uh, for the people that don't have an Xbox or are you trying to think about what console you want to get, besides our feelings on whether you should get a new console or not, um, that's a different point. It's been very strong, yes. Yeah, <laughs> but if you are looking for um, if you're looking for a console that's going to give you a large library of a diverse catalog of games then xbox does have that um the game pass and there's like over 100 something games on there and they just released about last week um they released all of the um a bunch of bethesda games um because of the you know as we reported last week um Zenimax is now microsoft's property so there's a bunch of games on there a bunch of bethesda games on there is also if you get the game pass too you get ea play for free attached to the game pass so all the ea games all the madden uh madden the next gen madden uh, is on there as well the fifa is on there 
Um, that was good for me because I'm not paying for another Madden game um, until they get their until he gets their uh, Sugar Honey Ice Tea, right? Right. But <laughs> but I don't mind accessing my free perks um, from my Game Pass membership. So uh, yeah, check that out. Um, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. And if this year don't if they don't bring out nothing fire with these games, bro, y'all might. Done. I'm, Look, bro. Done. You know how I went. I went straight. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be gone in the wind, man. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Mar. Out. Hey, hey, Out. bro. There's no point. Like, what? What are we doing? What? What are Yo. they doing? Like, I'm going know, straight man. to switch, and you would never see me again. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm going straight to switch. Oh, Stop playing you, games. Like, you're insulting my intelligence at this point. I'm hearing about more lawsuits. And people getting things wrong and folks actually talking about game development in the gaming community. Like, like I'm gonna sound like the black angry Joe for like the next five months if they do not produce something hot by the summer. Oh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull a drill. I'm gonna pull a Greg real quick. I'm gonna play Devil's Advocate. This is this one is strictly for Cam because I know how Cam is with the game. So I'm gonna play Devil's Advocate real quick for you, Cam. All right. So, most of the games that you play are what, like Call of Duty, 2K, Madden Racing. occasionally, whenever Greg gets on. Racing um, games. Racing game. What will get you to buy or to buy into this new generation of games? Because there are games coming, but I don't think they're the type of games that you will necessarily play. Ooh. So what Ooh. Cam? Man, I even oh. like it. Like I even like Hitman, but Ooh. Hitman was trash to me. You know what I'm saying? Like you play the new one? You play the new one? Yeah. Like it it it's just there there are games, man. I, I like other types of games. I like Assassin's Creed. I I like that. Uh I liked it on this gen. Um I like Mortal Kombat. I like Capcom games. I like um I like a lot of different stuff, man. It's just games. Yeah, man, I'm down with that. But bro, fight you, games are low. Fight games look is saving consoles. Bro, that's that's that's, that's really the only thing that's gonna save. I mean, come out with another tech and that's fire, bro. Like, I mean, it's just you're giving me the same thing though. Like you I got I didn't spend six hundred dollars on this console and you ain't gave me nothing for it. Like Zero. not nothing yet. Like, come give me a next gen game. Okay, then so, be so question, are you buying and Halo? Not, and not a port. Are you buying Halo in the fall? No, um, I'm not I'm not buying it out the gate. I don't trust it. I mean they, they had an extra 13, 14 months to work on it. So what would be the reason for you not getting it? Cyberpunk had three years. It may be even worse than that. <laughs> I, I think that's something different. That's totally. Different. I think I'm. I think I'm not going to buy any other games before lunch. Like the way that like they kind of scarred me with buying games. And sh- like I think I'm just gonna wait and just see how it is before I buy it. <laughs> and just look at some YouTube videos, see what it really is. And then I'll make my decision. I don't think I'm gonna buy too many more games on launch, man. It, it's just I feel you with that. I feel you with that. I would unless say, they start changing up, unless they start start bringing some some heat, and they're like, oh, okay, you know, those were next gen games. Duh. Now these are going to be next gen games. Okay, that's different. I will say this. Uh, I understand you completely, and I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I will say this. Don't leave at the end of the year because what people don't people don't realize is Microsoft started buying a lot of these companies making games for them over the last three four years two three four years and it takes a long time for games to be developed so a lot of these games that they recently or these companies that they recently uh, purchased their games probably won't be coming out until 2022 because of just the timeline it takes for a game to be made so I would say give it a chance wait up until early 2022, if you're not seeing nothing by then, you know, then it's, you know, you want to try to do this, that's cool, but give it I some guess time. What, what happened to the, uh, what happened to that one, you know, when they were showing that open world and the rocks and all of that, like they were showing us that like months off. before lunch. Yeah, they were showing us that type of stuff like months before lunch. Like, 
trust any of this. Like, and that's the issue about next gen gaming now. Because with Cyberpunk, with this Bethesda situation and numerous other instances, what you're starting to see in the gaming space is almost like false advertising. Because yes, games yes, that's take it. a long time. And games do take years to develop, right? But this is what's occurring behind the scenes, which is more important than what we get to see that's nice to look at in these trailers. We're getting fed these crumbs, and then what's happening during the development cycle is that these companies are basically just slaving away workers, right? And then all these head developers and people who work on staff, they're leaving by the droves. So the game gets killed before it even gets finished, right? So all the stuff we see up front, it looks all great, looks all cool, but all your top talent is basically getting dropped or leaving before the game's even done. So think about this. It's almost like, okay, Matter of fact, here's a good, I'm going to compare this to Space Jam, right? So you know how all the dudes in Space Jam were like superstar basketball players, right? Then the monsters stole all their powers. And then the monsters start killing these dudes until they got Michael Jordan to come out there and start D'ing people up. This is literally what's happened to these gaming companies. You got from from uh, CD Projekt Red, from Bethesda and all these people involved in that is it like they get all these people up here the next day you start reading these reports on Reddit and read these reports on gaming blogs. Top developer here is leaving. This dude over here is... Uh, He's deciding to stop making games. These folks are closing these studios and so forth. So even if I'm looking at Microsoft and they buying up all these companies, the reason why I feel like they buying on these companies is because they really don't have anything. That's a problem. They're buying, the, they're not buying, but there's an all these things because they want a competitive advantage. It's because they don't have anything going in the first place, which is an issue in comparison to a Nintendo or a Sony who Nintendo, as we all know, they have a back catalog. They'll never go broke. They can just remaster everything they've ever created and even stuff that never hit the stakes. Sony, eh, they've always had development studios. They can't really remaster a lot of things, but they still got some companies that they treat well enough in order to be able to produce new content. Microsoft, on the other hand, it ain't happening, man. It's starting to become a money fest. Everything is starting to become a money fest, even with Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed getting killed because of... uh. The simple notion that like okay extra content and skins and things of that nature more of the new stuff that people want is put behind paywalls than then actually being able to earn it via the game like all of this is starting to be twisted to just hey it's a play on money it's all gambling like it's terrible man and and until these companies and the consumer space end up working together or consumers just stop buying and these companies just end up getting taxed and dying off I don't know what's gonna change bro because a lot of these game, all, all these AAA gaming titles, bro, I haven't seen one yet that merges sing, a single player experience to an online one to be good enough where I'm just gonna pay for both, and that's just a good game I can have for years. See, I'm waiting on Horizon Zero Dawn for PlayStation. I, that story is gonna slap. After that, what else I'm gonna get out of that? Unless they're gonna make a kind of expansion pack and it's a brand new story, but they're not but doing see, that anymore. But see, that's the thing. Um, that game is not made for you to play multiplayer, for you to continuously play that for the next five, six years. That game is made for you to play single playthrough, maybe do a new game plus with add-on features and maybe a, an expansion of like, here's an extra area to open up where you can do this that we didn't have ready for the game launch. So it, it depends on the game that you're trying to buy, bro. Like if, if you're buying a game that, that is set up for online, and uh, single player experience. Certain games are, are made for that, but games like Horizon Zero Dawn are not made for that. So you have to know what, what you're buying and, and what you're actually looking to get. Uh, uh, me personally, as Jay knows, uh, Jay is kind of, I think, somewhat on the same path. Like, I buy games for stories. If the story is good, then I'm up, I'm up, I'm gonna get it. So it just depends on what you're looking for, bro. I mean, the, most of the, of the multiplayer experiences that we play today anyway, we sticking with Call of Duty, we sticking with Halo, and we sticking with a few other titles. That's really about it. There's no game that's come out recently with the multiplayer experience except for GTA Online that we're just like, oh my God, I gotta play it. I gotta play this multiplayer experience. So like, it's the same couple games. So we'll see. I was gonna say too, uh, as well, like how you asked Cam EJ about the games, the specific kind of games that Cam likes. We, we gotta ask ourselves too, um, what kind of games are we expecting? Do they have to necessarily be triple A IPs? Or is there other games by smaller studios that you're willing to enjoy? Because if you if we're talking about just triple A titles, then yeah, we're gonna we're definitely gonna be missing that for this first year 
of the console for sure. We won't really be seeing. It's always like that. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna start seeing AAA titles in 2022. 20, uh, but for but I'm I'm looking at the list now, and there's a couple of games that's coming out as Xbox exclusives this game this year. But a lot of them, maybe two or three, are only AAA titles. So that's going to go. Under. That's what makes the most money. What? What? True. True. I'm, but I'm open. I'm open. That, I'm that's just... what they're gonna. That's what they're gonna focus on. Like I'm open to AAA titles, but my thing is just give me a good game, and that's the problem. You're gonna ask me for my money. Then you're gonna ask me for continuous money over time, and then feed me trash. That's the issue. So, you know, everyone's over talking about like, well, what about the smaller developers? We're not gonna. To be honest, here's the issue with that too. They don't have money. They don't have money, so they're gonna give you one good game. That's if they're able to be able to get it off the ground to get it to you, right? Once, maybe what every five years, unless they make a ton of money off of taking the risk of making the first title, right? And then they get picked up by a major that basically funds. It. That's how this game works. It's almost like the rap game. There's only so much independent music making you gonna make <laughs> until you just like, bro, I can't afford to do this anymore because I can't even cover my studio time. But so wait, what am I gonna do? It's but the but, thing. But Jay, I'll oh, go ahead, Jay. Go ahead. I, was, I was gonna say this real quick. Indie indie studios are not. They're, it's not like they're completely broke. They're, they're you know they just don't have a, a a major studio behind them like Xbox. Because like you were saying earlier, but uh, they gotta make they gotta make one hot game. CD Projekt Red was the same way. But they the Witcher. That was a that was a gamble, you know that, right? And it and it blew up but, for him. But yes, but The Witcher was remember The Witcher started off as a PC title that got popular on PC. It was a niche game that got popular on by PC players before they thought about bringing it over to console where it got bigger. So yeah, but I'm just saying, if uh, you in, independent titles can be successful, and even no matter if they don't have a lot of money, either way. But usually independent titles. They're like these a lot of, from because we're, we're all hardcore gamers here. We're all hardcore gamers here. A lot of these indie titles, like how we were watching when we were watching all the press conferences recently that past this past year, were like stupid, like emo, <laughs> like emo games. So it's hard to it's hard to go through the, these catalogs of indie studios and find something that you're really going to stick to. And but they are, but they do make money. They do make money. So let's not pretending that you know game video the video game industry is the largest media uh industry in the game right in the in the world right now so it's not like they're not making money and also i just want to say this too uh because each uh Marv brought up a great point he brought up a great point because sony and nintendo is known for investing into their studios like insomniac sony sony works so close i think sony owns insomniac right now i think they own insomniac yeah. and 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 the games that we got out of Insomniac is what uh, uh, the Ratchet and Clank series, uh, Spider-Man. and Spider-Man stuff like that, and that that's great and all. And like Marv said, now is Microsoft has realized okay, we have to start buying studios now in order to compete. To me, that's not that's not a problem to me. That's not a problem to me when you when Marvel when Microsoft came out and said straight up, look, we we after the Xbox 360, we really kind of passed up on actually uh you know developing games in-house so what's the if if so that's telling right. me that's telling me right now they're not right now they're at a space where it would take it would be a while before they could really do get all the resources to uh to develop these games on their own so let's go ahead and buy these companies so we can add games to our our, our console because really the only major microsoft studio is what microsoft studios who does through 343 with halo in gears yeah so right. you know what i'm saying so i i have no problem with that you find some way to get games remember that's what that's what we were saying <laughs> we want right. cool, man my issue is is you sold me on the power of this console this is pc like and all this bs man all this power of this console and i have this console I have a phenomenal TV. It is a the top of the line Samsung that you can get. And I'm still looking at graphics from the old console that I had already. Like people are literally going back and playing Live 19 and 2K20 on the old consoles. 
and like that that makes absolutely no sense and i'm not talking about just just sports games because i download i i didn't bought the i bought a warcraft game uh with ships oh wow oh wow Oh, Dude, wow. I, I, I play a lot yeah, of stuff, man. Awesome. I bought I bought uh Star Wars Squadrons. I bought um uh a dog fighting plane. I mean a, a dog fighting game, like like war fighting with planes and stuff. Probably Ace Combat. Um, yeah, like, dude, like, I play a lot of stuff, but what I'm expecting is for you to give me the power. Like, you're giving these games look like they look trash. Like this is I'm I'm not I'm not looking at any graphics that are any better. The movement's not better. Like I'm disappointed in what I've been sold. I I, I, I let me say just one thing, DJ. All right, all right, say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I feel what, what Cam is saying, and but and that all goes to the development time that these companies had with the uh, the dev kits. And obviously, exactly. We're, exactly. obviously right. Exactly. And, and obviously, we're seeing that a lot because I, I was reading an article a different, another day, and they were uh, one this one team. They were like, we had a hard time developing for the Xbox because it's, it's hard to develop on the Xbox, the new Xbox, than it is on the PS5. So a lot of these, a lot of these studios just haven't had the time to really develop something big for these games, and that's why it's coming out later. It's coming out later than now. And that's a problem. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I mean, even communication, like, dude, just stop lying. Or even just, just put, just, <laughs> man, communication would just be a whole lot easier, dude. Like, if it's, if it's gonna be, you can't sell somebody at E3 and have these hundred plus games that are already ready, and we don't have any of them. Like, no, nah, man. Like, I don't like. You're a business. You're a company, man. Like, like. It's your job to provide a product and it's your job to communicate and market that product. Don't lie about it. If it's gonna oh. take time, that's cool, man. Just just give people the because people were buying this stuff. Man, it, it was it was people buying this stuff because they thought that it was gonna be something. They thought that this was gonna be available. That's why so many people were trying to get it so early and be first to have it so I can enjoy this new stuff. Like, yep. But I will say that. I'll say this, and y'all can all agree with me on this. We've watched three or four um, Microsoft and PlayStation press conferences before these systems drop, and they started all the way as early as end of July, early August, right? Game systems didn't come out to November. What were we saying after every one of those things? Those games look like kitty games. Those games look like indie games. Those games don't look yeah. like AAA games. We said that over and over and over. Show any of them. Yeah. So my thing is, I, I while I do agree with you, Cam, because you are correct, if they're gonna put the new system out, at least give me like one or two AAA titles that's gonna push, you know, the PS5 or the Xbox forward. They did not show us anything that was AAA that was gonna be out day one or that was gonna be out except for the Halo mess up, you know, which they ended up coming to and telling us that at in September. But they really didn't give us any like, okay, here's the AAA games that are coming out in January. Here's AAA games that are coming out early 2021. Like they didn't do that. They showed us all these little indie games that they had ready, or that were gonna be ready soon after release. And that's what they got out right now. We don't play those games, or a lot of us don't. I think Jay might play a couple. I think I play like one of them, but we don't play those games full time. So I can't look at them and say, hey, you kind of like sold me on a dream because from when I remember the marketing, they kept telling us how powerful the console was how loading screens are going to be faster, how when you drop into a game, you don't have to worry about saving because it's already going to be there when you come back. Quick resume, blah, blah, blah. Like, they told us a lot of the stuff that they, they were going to have. And Jay hit the nail on the head when he just said, when these guys got these dev kits, it was closer to the end of the life cycle of the last generation. I'm talking two years before the end of the life cycle of the last generation. Games, AAA games, take no less than three and a half to four years to be made. So if we're wanting them to give those games to us, all we, we gotta we kinda gotta wait a little bit. And maybe it's not yeah. Xbox, maybe it's the game developers that were marketing their games like they were like 2K. Like the way that 2K marketed this game was complete trash. I mean, that's, that's just 2K <laughs> always so <laughs> 2K has been selling us a dream for the last six years. Like we haven't had any meaningful move forward on 2K since 2K14. So, I mean, it's nothing, they sell us on a dream every year to the point to where Jay and them were saying they weren't going to buy the game until it came out, which rightfully so, because I mean, every year it's the same thing. So 
who's to say that maybe this year might be different since they've had a whole year and a half to work on a brand new game we'll see but i'm just saying let's just give it some time because if you look back at every generation there really is no standout game that comes out within the first year of a new council generation ever except for halo on the first xbox so that's all i'm saying okay don't do they still ain't get my money though until they release these titles. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't missing nothing, bro. Trust me. Straight there up. There is a game, Jay. I don't know if Jay, you heard about it. It's called like Returnal on, on PS5. Yeah, you, you told me about that? it. You told me about it, yeah. That game looks fire. So if everybody out here listening who does have a PS5, if you want to get a, a new, never before seen AAA title that's coming out soon within the next month and a half, Returnal comes out on PS5, I think at the end of end of April, early May, something like that. That's really. I was excited about MLB, but man, I've been watching some gameplay and that junk look hard. Like, (laughs) (laughs) if you don't play that game, it's nothing you can do. I was like, oh, you got to place the bat in the right place to (laughs) roll. Like, yo, it look difficult. (laughs) Bro, on sixty four, it's not that. Can I just press X? It's like right swing time. stick with the shoot stick. It's just like that. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Dang. Like to freak. That's like when they tried to freak the Tiger Woods PGA. And you yeah. Just, you know, the swing. It's like, all right, bro. Bro, they got fire after that. What y'all talking about? They got fire after that. Hey, bro. yo. No, nah, it, 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 it got fire because it got hard. No, it got fire because it got hard. And everybody couldn't do it. So it exactly. made it harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like what um, you got it down is like all right, cool, but still. But uh we're gonna segue into this next one since we're talking about games not coming out on time. Um for, did any did everybody here play the old Batman Arkham Asylum or Arkham Knight game? I know me and Marvin did in college. But Jay, I know you played it. Uh Cam, did you play it? Man, that's an old one, ain't it? Yeah, but we, well they had a sequel coming out to the third one, um, which is supposed to be called Gotham Knights. That was supposed to come out this year on PS5 and Xbox, but it got delayed into 2022 because they said that they needed more time to give uh, gamers the type of game that they wanted and the experience that they wanted to provide. So that game has been delayed into 2022. I'd rather them do that. <laughs> I, I feel you. I'm just saying, yeah, they're delaying. So we're going to get some stuff. I just got to wait. That's all. That's what it is. I'm disappointed. We're going we to see. I'm disappointed because we talked about this too before about you know we talked about this with cyberpunk about them announcing games and then now and then a month or a couple of months later they got delayed to a whole nother year so now i had to wait like what's the point yeah so (laughs) so so you never you was never close like you 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 couldn't have been that close to make that it's like what what's the point (laughs) right Like okay, I would much rather you wait and tell me if game is coming out next oh. next month, and that'd be the first time I hear about it. But if you meet that date, I'm cool. Don't tell me two years in advance the game's coming out, and then every year you push it back another year. Like just tell me right before it comes out, I'll get hyped up and I can go buy it. Exactly. That's... Be like, bro, we just ain't got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like, hey, man, we ain't got it. I would just appreciate. We ain't got it. I would just appreciate you just put out a press release, say, hey, hello, we're working on a new marketing. I mean, we're working on uh, developing a new Batman game. Uh, we do not we don't have any more information than that, but we just want to let you guys be, get excited. We'll give you more information as we continue development. Don't put a trail out with gameplay. Word. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're going to give a disclaimer, not actual gameplay footage. It's like, stop, bro. Stop playing with me, man. Come on, now, yeah, Come on, man. Been, uh, we follow Alana Pierce. She put out a video on YouTube recently. Shout out to her. Um, she was explaining, she talked to a developer about how those in-game footage trailers work that we see when the game is still in early Trash. infancy. She was basically saying, she asked the guy, she was like, so would you consider that part of the game or would you consider that like an offset that y'all just build for people to see? And he was like, we build those so people know what we're capable of doing. He was like, if you see that, and then y'all still don't give it, give it to me. He was like, that's not a true representation of what actually is going to be at the end of the game until we get to the finish line. He was like, you can see that and only 50% of what we put in that in that, in that that in-game trailer is going to actually be in the, in the final game. So he was like, people were getting upset at, at Cyberpunk saying that they were lying, that they were showing footage that wasn't in the game. 
he was like, no, they actually made that demo. And then when it came to the mm -hmm. game, they had to take some stuff out and change it up. So I, it's hard to get excited about this kind of stuff now, especially hearing more what these devs are talking about as far as like how they do them. Right. So we just got to wait until the last couple of months before a game comes out before you can actually judge it on what it should actually look like. And, Boy, and, look, and man. do we do we have to have a a language or a new way to market these things? Because I saw the same interview talking about um, and because he was saying like they take a portion of a game that's close and then they yep. po they polish it up right and show it to everybody. That's false advertising. That's that's. <laughs> <Bruh>. <laughs> Bro, that's the problem. Like I've been saying, that's like I'm problem, telling you, like, man, this is like this is like low key, like illegal, bro. Like, right. So you you're literally lying to us. I don't care. Okay, say that then. Tell us. Okay, look, this is a portion of the game. We're trying to get it to this. This is what we're working on. We're trying to get it the best way. I I would respect that more. Tell, let me know that this is what y'all are aiming for, and and hopefully we can bring it, you know, to you know fruition. Don't tell me this is. This is Cyberpunk 2077. Look at the sky turn dark in real life. We did this and did that and add all these HDMI things to it and an HDR plus 10 TVs will make it look like you're really snowing outside and all of it. Don't lie to me. <laughs> Tell me straight up. And, and that 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 communication with the gamers, like y'all saying, is, is the problem that we're having because ultimately it's the developer's fault that you are getting all these gamers hyped up over this stuff because you guys are advertising it one way. And that's what gamers want. We want the best of the best. We want something with the, with the some great gameplay, a great story and great graphics. So you're, t you're teasing us every time. So of course we're gonna get hyped up. And then you got people like, like EJ, who's been following, you know, like Cyberpunk for as long as he has, and you see the material that they're putting out, and he's like, oh shit, let me let me go ahead and put some money to the side. I'm not touching it. Not touching let me get this special. <laughs> let me get this special edition. Exactly. By the way, speaking of this, Marvin said that I will never buy another special edition again. <laughs> oh, I told you. I told y'all. I told y'all. Well, you know, you, you, Riley, and Greg have that issue. So. <laughs> But you wanna know but you wanna know some funny fact? EJ's never bought EJ's never bought a special edition of anything. I was the guy that used to do that. I bought special editions of that. everything that came out. Exactly. I'm the pro I'm the pro I'm talking any game that I like, I brought the special editions of bruh. And then eventually I told EJ the game, none of these things are worth it, bruh. They used to be. You used to when you paid that hundred dollars for the game, it was worth it. <laughs> Not no, more. Not no nah, more. What if they slap yeah, everything yeah. behind? You get, you get, oh man, right. you gotta buy, you gotta buy the battle passes and all this stuff. That's what I do. That's whack. Like, why are you trying to get? It takes me from having to spend a Benjamin worth of for to get a material that probably makes out, I don't know, a year and a half to almost two years worth of content. Now they're just giving me literally the first year, maybe, maybe, and then everything else I have to rebuy. That's stupid, bro. At least with GTA, when you set the body expansions for that, it was a whole game. That's true. That's true. The Battle um, of the Gay Tony, the uh, the the biker missions, like all that. I was like, all right, bro, I'll pay y'all that extra fifty to get a whole like five to six more hours of gameplay. Like, right, right. Um, but yeah, Jay, nah, nah, bro. I'm not Greg. I don't go out and buy every single thing that comes out. That's, that's 150. I don't do that. Like. I have never really bought a special edition until Cyberpunk and they let me completely down. Like they ruined it for everybody else in the future. Like I don't care what you put out in special edition. I might buy some <laughs> like some expansions, but as far as spending $150, $200 on a on the on the on the day one edition or whatever that, that crap is, never again. No, sir. <laughs> Not me. That is, that is done. But uh I guess one game we can say that's that's triple A, which maybe you can contribute this game to being one of the games that we talked about where we wait and not see any gameplay or anything super crazy until the end of the life cycle until the end of uh the development jay's favorite game it looks like is going to be from this year is going to be outriders and that game is coming to xbox game pass on day one and that is being called jay a triple a title yes it so, is um, square enix that's a triple a company square enix, yeah um, that is coming to Xbox Game Pass or Xbox uh, Game Pass subscribers mm. on day one for free. 
Uh, I have seen mm-hmm. gameplay. It looks fire to me. Um, and Jay's been talking about us playing, but we can never get three people on to play the game in the same time. <laughs> so um, I deleted the demo, but I will be playing it on day one. Um, Jay, how do you feel about that? Because I know that's a big deal. It going straight to Game Pass and not having to pay 60 bucks for it. Well, I want to say this too, Prefaces. This goes exactly to what Mar said, where the studios are buying, I mean, uh, Microsoft are buying these studios to uh, to make, put these games. Now, they in this situation, they're not buying the studio, but you know, some kind of contract. I'm about to be like, pay for a dang sure ain't getting that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but but I know what you're saying. Like, they right. bought right to get the game on Game Pass. Ex- they exactly. bought the license. Yeah. Right. And that's, to me, that's a sign of what could be potentially happening for games in the future because this is a triple-A title. Square Enix is known for Final Fantasy. How's that, how's that a sign, though? Know, that's no different than what they did with just getting the exclusivity rights uh, locked behind, like, a couple months. Like, what they used to do with COD, what they used to do with, like, uh, Dead Space and all that, where it just came to a system first for a couple months before everybody else got it. No, this game is... is first of all, this game is... is not a exclusive to xbox but what the sign i'm talking about is is that this game is going to be free a triple a title from a big company where we get it for free with our game pass so this is microsoft trying to show the value in being a subscriber to the game pass so this means this could be the start of okay future triple a titles being available to game pass members for free they already told us with the bethesda stuff that's going to be free on game pass so this is just showing you, this is just like one, this is like the first of what of what's to come for people sign up on the Game Pass. You will see AAA titles on Game Pass now, and you won't have to pay 60 bucks for them. And that's great. So uh um, I don't think that's gonna last be happening, honestly, because it just came up out of nowhere. It did. They told me about this game called Outriders. I looked at it, the game looks fire. Then all of a sudden, three weeks later, it's gonna be on Game Pass day one. I mean, I gotta give it to Microsoft for that. Like that's pretty legit and it's not one of these uh indie games or games side scrolling games you're gonna play for four hours like it's an actual full-on game and jason the, you said the demo was like a whole level of, a, of, of the game wasn't it? Yeah, like the, a whole the while yeah the demo has like has three missions and it has like a couple side missions too um you all the equipment all the money that you get all your uh armor pieces and guns all that carries over to the full game so it, that's why so that was another incentive to um getting the game as well um it's it's like a gears of war meets uh, uh i want to say destiny and the division uh so it's it's a looter shooter um but it has, has a sci-fi element to it they, all the characters um can use powers and stuff like that there's like a fire um type there's a a technological technology type dude there's a a dude that uses earthquakes and earth i I made that character and there's another one that uses like frost abilities and it's it's pretty it's pretty cool it it has it looks like it's using the unreal engine i'm not sure um but it, it does look like um gears of war in a more fantasy well i mean gears of war is kind of a fantasy in a way um, but it's definitely similar to that, and I, I played the demo and I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool. But um, it's drop in drop out co op, similar to like uh, Army of One, Army of Two. I mean Army of Two, the Army, Army of Two series. Um, and so you can play Just the game. Play right there. Oh yeah, right. That was fire. <laughs> so you can play <laughs> you can play solo. Um, it's a lot of cover based stuff. So yeah, like I said, it's, it's very reminiscent of those. It was I actually played the demo. It was pretty fun. Um, it wasn't an alpha. It wasn't beta. They they came, Square Enix came out and said straight up, this is a demo of the game, um, and so enjoy it. And uh, I had fun with it. Just uh, I, I I think it would be right. way more fun with a team though. I played it by myself, but it was. All really right, fun. we go, we go, we go see. I'll look at some preview. I like looter shoot, but we go see. Yeah. If it's trash though, I'm gonna tell y'all straight out the gate. <laughs> yeah. I will. Yeah. I will say this to though, uh, Mar. There was, <clears throat> we always. First of all, y'all know me. I need to be able to create a black dude, and I need more than one option. So, um, <laughs> hopefully, with the full, I think there was only like one or two black faces, and um, there was not a lot of variety. Uh, when is this? Stop, man. This doesn't yeah. make any. We're in 2021, and they still can't figure out how to give us at least 10 different presets to start from. Like, well, I mean, you're also dealing with Square Enix, which is a Japanese company. 
So, I mean, just, just saying, just, like, to be honest, the, 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 the white people, the everybody. We, you said what? We play all these games that do this. Every game, me and Jay oh. talk about all the time. Every game we play, no matter who it's from, there's literally three to four presets, sometimes less for African Americans you know, for any for anything else. It's got to stop. Oh, I understand. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that is going to be a wider cultural conversation than what it is now right like i think the conversation if we look at from a gaming point of view is that a lot of the gaming studios now versus what it was back in the day they're starting to be on u.s soil with xbox being a thing right and microsoft getting in the gaming space that enabled more people here in the u.s to develop resources to be able to produce games here versus back in the day bro most of was over all overseas making the fire bro <laughs> Let's just keep it a sec. Konami, Capcom, all these people making games for Capcom made Resident Evil, bro. Like Americans, we like, and you made the only games that you have like sports games, you're like that hey, racing. You know, anything that EA was coming out was like the big American studio. But now, you know, they piece of garbage, but it is what it is for everyone else who's in like the PC space. So like your blizzards were making StarCraft and Diablo and things of that nature, right? So when it comes to diversity and people being able to accommodate black faces in gaming i think from an international presence that is i believe is going to be a growing conversation starting like real heavy this year and i think with the power of the internet with the power of more american studios being a thing with the power of us seeing somewhat of a shift in trying to get more diversity in executive roles within the gaming industry. I feel like that's going to be more accommodated over time. I also believe that um, if you're looking at the industry just growing and being able to put people in place so they can speak to these things, that that is a challenge within itself, not from a systemic issue, but you also got to understand that, shoot, a lot of us aren't getting in the gaming space. We're not I mean, black African Americans still represent a very, very small portion of people who are pursuing STEM majors in college. And then not only that, how many of them are going to be that great at programming that want to pursue a career in gaming? Like, it's already pursuing a career in gaming is already like rigorous within itself. Like, getting on a studio, it's, it's a lot of turnover within this industry, you know? So, I feel you. Trust me, I do. It's just, I, I don't, I don't know. I think in my opinion when it comes to that like they're considering it but I still think that's kind of like in the background yeah you're right, uh, you're until, right. until they figure until they oh. figure out a way for it to make money I don't think they're gonna make that a priority like we saw the Miles Morales thing but that was a Marvel thing you see what I'm saying so it's kind of just like they knew that was gonna make money but to be able to be like I right. or it was something that was like Something, you got to be able to I want to see black content that isn't making black people look like a monolith so think about this look at Grand Theft Auto San Andreas if you really want to keep it a bean that's probably the blackest game we've ever seen ever ever like in the history of gaming if you sincerely sit back and think of black culture black actors black faces that is probably the blackest game we've ever seen besides like and, and no, that, def, that, def jam, that Def Jam, that Def Jam game. Def was Jam. That, that, was, that was a gimmick. Def Jam and Def Jam and Def Jam was a gimmick, though, man. That was a gimmick. I'm sorry. I, I love. I'm not gonna lie. When you come to fighting game, it was a solid it game. Two games, Everybody was really? fire. <laughs> it had, but but the thing, but the thing is though, it was about hip hop culture. It wasn't about black lives. You see what I'm saying? Like we haven't gotten a game where you have a black story that was compelling enough to the masses that people jumped into that wasn't super gimmicky but you know it was still good and that's what San Andreas was San Andreas I'm not even, even, I'm not even going so far to make no games about slavery or nothing man or <laughs> 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 uh, but I'm saying like look at all the black stories bro like look they're all in movies man like that's that's it like, like, they're trying to make that out there about us. Like you know, all the black actors always got to play in slave. Movies. That's what I'm saying, yeah. bro. Like, but I think Marvel took it further than I was actually going. Like I'm not even talking about black experiences in gaming. Like oh, I need a black like a black protagonist story. Like I'm not even talking about that. I just want a black face as a preset 
for a multiplayer <laughs> character. <laughs> that's all I'm asking. You're not gonna be but you to go what I'm saying. Bro. Like, I'm not asking you to go that deep. But but the thing the thing what I'm saying is that if you're speaking for that in the grand scheme of things, they have to understand black culture in order to get that right. And that's why I'm saying it's deeper than that. You feel yeah. me? Because think about this. They make because think about this. They make Ghost of Shishima. Ghost of Shishima is loosely based on real culture. Samurai and feudal Japan is a real thing. If you could deep dive into the history of that, my, you could deep dive into just basic hip hop culture and be able to derive, hey, this is what African Americans look like, and they don't do that. Well, I'm, well, here's, here's my problem with that. Y'all play 2K. Y'all play 2K. <laughs> When's the last, bro? How long did it take for you to get just a basic preset for a nigga to get free sixty way? Yeah. yeah. How long? How long, bro? <laughs> but notice, but but look. But notice that was an American company. 2K is an American company, and they weren't getting the hairstyles right in the beginning. It's I don't think it's a I don't I don't think it's a cultural issue. I don't I don't think I don't I disagree with that. I think it's I don't think that's a cultural thing. I just think that's you know like um, EJ is trying to say. I think is well, do we do we care for that? Is that a priority in our game? Yeah, so, is that a priority? Exactly. <laughs> right, because this is an RPG. This this is mainly an RPG problem. You, you know. When you when most RPGs allow you to create your own character, what we asking for me because I know me and EJ really play RPGs. Um, out of I want to say everybody in here, uh, we we want to create people that resemble us. You know what I'm saying? So of it, course, right, right. So I, all I'm asking for is more than one two black faces, and especially when the two black faces are nothing close to what I look like and I and how I want to be represented. In the game, so and if you got a problem, <clears throat> and if you're over in France, you know with Ubisoft or wherever these companies are at in England and and all this stuff like that, there's black people in France. Go pull them off the street. Say, does this look like look like somebody black? Do something like it's, call people in, get references. Right. There's too many ways to do this, and I know it's like, oh, well, that's gonna cost money. You, it costs you money to do everything else. But wait, it's not. Yeah, but it, it don't. But what I'm telling. Wait, wait. I'll just say this: it's, it don't cost money to look on Google and just look up black black men. Black black <laughs> actors, black models. They can go on. They can go on. They can but go. Then, on. But then you go end up into a problem with these idiots. Really go start making niggas look like Samuel Jackson did the Washington. And you be like, bro, why does the nigga look like did the Washington? If I look, <laughs> you be like, I don't look like the nigga. But if you have a Denzel Washington, a Samuel Jackson, a Will Smith, a Martin Lawrence, and so on, different we don't types. Even get that. <laughs> right. Man, they got a fifty cent in. They got a fifty cent in Warzone. Right. Yeah, the fifty cent in Warzone. Right. Yeah. Right. The 50 cent <laughs> Man, that dude, that like, character that Greg on, on Cold War, he looked like a slave, bro. He looked like the dude from uh, <laughs> from Django. Like, don't give us like, give me. You want to give me a Will Smith? Give me a Will Smith. Give me a Denzel Washington. Stop giving me these slave looking characters. Right. Find something and give me some actual good looking black characters. But it takes. But this is what I'm saying. That takes the people who look like us behind the scenes in these positions to being able to have equity in order to call out and make these decisions. And that was the universal point that I was making. We don't. So I can't sit up here and expect these Asian and white men to sit up here and be able to understand how important that decision is because they won't. That's the point. We're not in there. I, I think, this but here's the thing. If you never think about it, they, they don't give a shit. Like that all, they like that, correct? So we can't just sit here and not say nothing, expect them to one day get it. I'm saying something. More people need to say that. You gotta continue, you're, 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 gonna, you're gonna have to continue. You're gonna have to continue to say something. But at the same time, we also have to. We're gonna have to continue to say something. We're also gonna have to continue to support black people who are in this industry who are actually physically in the ground making things and supporting them mm -hmm. and getting their talent shine so they can be able to possibly be Man. brought onto these projects and to be able to create. It's deeper all than we, that, bro. No, nah, all we need is some damn YouTubers to request it or to demand it and say we need more black people. Them niggas <laughs> are being paid by companies, bro, and they're broke people just I'm like just everybody else. They gonna do saying, whatever. They're going to go wherever who has got the check, bro. You know, if, but if the, if the people buying the game, they got all the power. If the people buying the game demand it, if enough of them demand it, they'll get it. It don't take, it don't even take all they, that. They not Cam? They're not. I, I mean, oh, I know. I know we know what's yeah. not going to happen, but you got to start. It, it has to though. Just here and just be you like, got to oh, start somewhere, but it, but it it has to happen. But what I'm saying is, so far, it's going through YouTubers and the people. Here's the problem with the people: we are so stupid, bro, and don't understand the power that we have that we do nothing. We look because think about this: all 
this was so crazy. I've been sitting back probably what a year and a half and just seeing people literally complain about Call of Duty the entire time, like from from the top of the game to now, including Cold War, and nothing has changed. Literally, nothing has become favorable for people who are diehard COD fans at all. Because you know what's crazy about these niggas? They still don't play the damn game and stream it. That's a bigger conversation. And that's what they're banking on. That's a bigger conversation. It's a huge, way bigger conversation. <laughs> yeah. That's a problem. Like, like, like think the only time I've seen recently where gamers are just like, nah, enough is enough. Fallout 76. That was so bad. These dudes was like, yo, no. Like, we ain't playing this, bro. Like, y'all got us fucked up. Like, y'all niggas must seriously think we just, y'all insulting our intelligence about giving us this. It got so bad that niggas ended up suing Bethesda and damn near brought them down. And now Microsoft, what's so crazy about this, that whole thing, they got brought down so low and Microsoft sat back and let it happen and didn't even it didn't even assist with them correcting the issue and making right, making things right with the gamers. They waited for the stock price of the company to get them next to nothing so they could swoop in and buy them for cheap. And that's why these niggas are on the game path. That's, and they're basically owned by Microsoft if, now. If that's makes the, perfect. If they that's had the, to get bailed out. It's, it's like it's like an inadvertent bailout without it being a bailout. If that makes sense, they had no choice. But if that's the case, if that's truly what happened, I, I mean, I don't blame Microsoft for that because but that's the create at the time before this this deal. They create their own beat, right? Yeah, they create their own games for multiple consoles, so they weren't exclusive. It'd be one thing if they were exclusive to Microsoft before the deal, and then Microsoft didn't do anything. Then yeah. But they, they, that situation affected Sony and Microsoft and all the gamers. But like you said, like I said that's a bigger conversation because we, we, we already know that to get the changes that we want in the gaming industry and as gamers, it would, it would have to, we would have to boycott and every, all the gamers would have to band together to boycott. We're not willing to do that. You know what I'm saying? We're not At willing all. to do that. We're still, we're still giving them money and, and money talks. It's just like Madden. How many times? How long have we been saying that Madden is not the game that uh we uh, the Madden is, hasn't been, hasn't improved, and but people still buy it. They still have Madden tournaments. The same thing with 2K. We complain, complain, complain. But if you still got the majority of people on social media <laughs> talking about how great this game is, and you and and they're paying money and buying all this VC and stuff, and you, you know, and it's making the company millions and millions of dollars. They're not going to change shit. So it would have to be a mass exodus from certain from certain games and and, and you know uh, and, and to leave these companies and stop buying this stuff. I just don't see that happening. So you know. Yeah. I, I feel I, you. I just I'm, all I'm saying is, bro, give me a couple of resets, bro. I ain't even asking you to build a whole another game. I just need a couple of faces. On bro, there. just give me a spectrum of black skin and people that aren't just like monolithic. I feel like God damn, bro. Like shit. Man. It's no, it's like it's no transition between like the kinds of black people they offer. It's like, bro, they got a super black dude, and then when you try to uh, <laughs> make a, a mid range brown or light skinned nigga, he basically looks Dominican. So I'm just like, what the fuck going on, my dude? <laughs> why, why do they do that? They always make like no the, idea. The purple black guy, <laughs> he's so black, he's purple. That's it, and that's yeah, it. They gotta, you, they gotta show you we got a real black guy in the game, so we don't give you an extra black guy. That's what they do. Uh, you want to know? You want to know? You want to know? It's wild and crazy, bro. I haven't seen accurate like black people character formatting since Tony Hawk Underground I think. Oh wow. That's the only game I can recall that just had a spectrum of people you can actually create. Mm. Tony did that for us, bro. Uh, well, I, I'll look, my thing is look, just like they can take they can hey, they can take minute, images. Hold on, hold on. What uh wasn't Tony Hawk wasn't Tony Hawk uh the whole series made by Activision? Yeah it was. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was but if you can take what? images, if you could go online and go on Google, because this is a practice that's done that we know for sure. They take images yep. off Google and they put it in the game for backdrops and stuff. There's there's no reason you can't look up um, black people up online online and and try to get uh you know just try to get a template for some of these faces or even add a character sculptor like you know in Elder you know in the Elder Scrolls series they always add sculptors and to design the uh. To help you design the characters for it, so if, if, even if we had that, that would be great. Yeah, I right. mean, you made a big point. Like, I, I, I'll even be playing some of these RPGs, Jay, and I'll see black characters in the background that look better than my damn character. I'm like, bro, why can't you put that? <laughs> <laughs> like, better than my character. So, I mean, it's like if you're gonna scan that face into the game and use that as a character in the background, bro, and you're gonna give me the slave dude, 
as like the preset. Like, come on, man. Like, at least, Damn. Um, I just 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 make here's, it right. Here's an even bigger question. Here's, here's an even bigger question. Remember when they did the whole thing where like you did the facial scanning and you put yourself in the game? I thought that was gonna be the wave of the future, and every console was gonna do that. Why I did, did that too. go away? I bro, two K. Why, why did that go away? Two K is the only. That's weird though. Move. Like they might as well. I feel like that'll cut down so much work. Literally, like, hey, screw having to develop character mapping, bro. We just build it out bro. as it comes along. I feel you, bro. We can that would be dope as hell, man. You make it. And here's You say what? I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, people up here getting too old for that, though. Like, this should have came out this when we was like 20. They up here trying to put that out. I mean, I understand that, but shit, man. Hey, 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 nigga, I still look great for my age. So, I mean, I ain't really tripping. I still look the same. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Now, all I'm saying is they should have been had this technology out. Very true. I, I, I dig it. I dig it. But uh, I'm going to check this game out, though. Because the looter shooter made by Square Enix. I mean, you already got me sold. Yeah. Square Enix. Well, going to keep it a bean. They don't miss. Yeah, the most yeah. part, that's true. They don't um, miss. Yeah, well, so I'll be on. <laughs> I, I, if, if it's that far, I'd buy a console for it. Uh, well, you better hit up uh, Microsoft on Thursday at three p.m. Uh, that, that shit's probably gonna be bought out, bro. I ain't even about to waste my time and be hassled by that, bro. At this moment in my life, <laughs> I'm just saying, check it out, bro. If you get there and you see it, and please wait. Screen then and leave. another thing, uh, and, and another thing too is when is this game even dropped me? Anyway? Uh, what game? Outriders? Yeah. April 1st, I believe. Yeah, right, April Jeff? 1st. Yep, April 1st. The whole game. The whole game. The whole game. I'll see previews. Mm-hmm. And I'll wait. I'll wait for it. I Tom mean, gonna get it, it, anyway soon. it's free on the, on the pass, so I mean, I, I might as well download it. It ain't gonna hurt. I can always delete it. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do nothing. But uh, I think that's really about it. Oh, you know what? I did want to mention one thing before we leave. Um, Everybody tuning in, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, we have a lot of music fans who tune into the show also. We always talk about verses on here, and that's something that we end up talking about a lot, different rap battles that's been going on, some of the R&B battles that's been going on. But uh, April 2nd will be the best verses of all time. There is no this debate. Is here. This is here, bro. Uh, I don't care who's been on recently. I know Raekwon and Ghostface the other day, that was cool, that was nice. Hard. I, I enjoyed Super it. Super hard. Uh, we we saw we saw Babyface, we saw uh, Teddy Riley. That was great. Uh, you know, we've seen we've seen a lot of a lot of Jeezy, on versus yeah, Jeezy and 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 uh, Mars Boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> big wop, boo wop. Oh <laughs> but on April second, we have the legendary Earth, Wind, and Fire and Isaac Brothers going up against each other, which happens to be my two favorite groups of all time. Head to head versus on April second. So everybody listening, please tune in to that. Um, go go check it out. It's gonna be epic. That's all I'm gonna say. I know most of the most of the, the groups are, are pretty old, you know, and some of the members aren't there anymore. But just the music, you know, and it's gonna be amazing. So if you're listening, go tune in to versus on April second. Uh, and you tune in for a treat. But other than that, Marv, take us out, man. Well, that wraps up another episode of the shooting program. We definitely appreciate y'all tuning in. Feel free to follow all of us on our social media channels. Feel free to follow us at the shoot program on Instagram and Twitter. And tune in next week to another episode, man. Much love and appreciation to all of y'all, man. Peace.